Today, I'd like to introduce you briefly to the Google Nick collection and some of its tools, which are great for photographers. Um, you can use the collection as a standalone application, or you can use it in conjunction with Photoshop or Lightroom as an example. Today, um, I'll show you some of the basic things you can do with the Nick collection within Photoshop. First, uh, I'll show you the HDR Effects Pro tool to create an HDR or high dynamic range image by uh, merging several images of the same subject taken split seconds apart, each being uh, dis exposed differently. One underexposed, the other one ideally exposed, and the third one overexposed. Um, after I am done with that tool, I'm going to show you some uh, additional tools, in fact three of the uh, several tools that are part of the Nick collection, and um, briefly show you some of the things you can do. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to start by making sure that Photoshop is up and running. For this, I'm using Photoshop CS5, but any of the newer versions, including Photoshop Creative Cloud, will work. Now, I've also previously installed and loaded the Nick Collection tools as well, which are available within Photoshop as filters. Now, you can see here on the side, um, the tools reside also in their own floating toolbox. Now we're going to be using the HDR Effects Pro Tools first. Now to start, I'm going to load three differently exposed shots of a picture I took recently in Germany. So what I'm going to do first is click on Merge Image Series. This dialog box will appear, and here you get to open the place where these photos are stored. I have them in a collection or in a uh, folder called Nick. I'm just going to drag and select and open. Now they're all going to be here as source files. The next thing you want to do is uh, click on Merge Dialog. It's going to take a moment for those uh, individual shots to load in Photoshop before they get loaded in the HDR Effects Pro Tool. So here is the composite image. You get to play a little bit around with the different exposure settings before you actually start working on the photograph within the tool. So I'm going to keep it right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore these things right here on the right. I'm going to click on and move this over. Create HDR. Okay, the image should load here in a moment. There it is. And here on the left, you'll see a bunch of presets. Click on this one, you'll get a little bit more uh, intense version of an HDR picture. You can kind of click around and see which, which image would suit you the most. I really like this one right here. And then on the right, you have different settings that you can play with. You can change the method of strength, which uh, is kind of subtle, but you can see if I move it, if I move this uh, slider to the right, it's going to get a little bit more. Um, the details will pop a little bit more. Right here, you have some presets. Again, you can uh, make the HDR method more strong or weak, depending on where you want to uh, end up. Same with the details, you can go all the way to the right and make it very surrealistic or just move it back to the left to keep it more on the realistic side. Same thing with the next uh, uh, sliders here, the drama or uh, how deep you want the drama to be or how dreamlike you want it to be. Okay, so find whatever works best for you. You can play around with the exposure settings I like it like this, play around with the shadows, um, add a little more highlights. Um, you can adjust the uh, contrast a little bit more. I like it like this. And you can uh, dial up the blacks. So you make the blacks pop a little bit more. Same with the highlights. And then the structure really just makes the image more grainy if you go all the way to the right. You can see that in the sky. Makes the detail come out more. I kind of like it a little bit more like this. And then uh, on the colors, you can kind of play around with the uh, temperature of the picture. Cool it down, warm it up. That's, of course, too much. 
kind of like it like this. All right. And these other settings I'm just going to leave for now. If you feel this is where you want this picture to be, click OK. Okay, so now the image is going to be loaded into Photoshop. There it is. And you can do some more work on the picture from there. The next we're going to be using a tool called Viviza, which is a tool to help you with uh, color adjustments and uh, the adjustments of tonalities without having to use any complicated masks or selections within Photoshop. So I'm going to load a picture that I took previously, and I'm going to load it into Photoshop. And I'm going to go over here to my uh, Nick Collection Tools and click on Viveza 2. It's going to load it into this tool right here. The slider lets you see the before and after. So I'm going to keep it right here in the middle. One of the cool things about this tool is that you have these control points. You click on it and drop it onto part of your image. And now you can adjust that part of the image. You can uh, adjust the size that you want uh, to have this tool affect um, the image. And then you get to go to work. I can adjust the uh, contrast, making the sky a little bit more, and make it pop more. I can make it more blue. Okay. I can even add more saturation. Uh, some of that may look a little strange, a little less realistic. We certainly can uh, play around with the different settings. I can add some more warmth. Okay. And I can take this point and move it wherever I'd like. And the settings I just chose will affect whatever's underneath um, this uh, control point. So I'm going to go back to the sky right here. I think it's a little too red. We're going to dial down the red a little bit more like this. That's too too much cyan. Okay. I can play around with the saturation a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take another control point and dump it right over the green. And I can go make it more green, less green, darker. So I want to have the church pop more in the background and not have the... Uh, the trees be the focal point. Okay, a little more saturation. Okay. Okay, and then I can slide this back and forth and see uh, some of the changes I've already made. I'm going to dro drop another control point right here over the church. I'm going to make the church pop a little bit more. Well, add a little more saturation here. And structure. Okay, see that? Maybe a little too red. I'm going to take some of the red down. Okay. You can also certainly adjust the entire picture by just going to these um, global settings. So too strong. Okay, now let's go back and see what it looked like before. And I think I'm going to like it like this. I'm going to click OK. And the adjustments will be made in Photoshop. There you go. Okay, our next tool is going to be uh, Define, D-F-I-N-E, which is a tool that helps improve the image by reducing some of the noise that uh, may have been created as you shot the picture. So I'm going to go work with the picture we worked with before. And as I zoom in here, you can see some of the artifacts and or graininess in the picture. So if you click on Define, it will automatically analyze the picture. And you'll see right here on the right-hand side how that all of a sudden goes away. It's a lot more smooth. Okay. All you have to do is click OK. And... Voila, the image looked a lot better. Okay.
Okay, our final tool is my favorite tool. It's called the Solar Effects Pro tool, which lets you um, do some great things um, with black and white photography or taking color pictures and turning into some stunning black and white images. Now, of course, a lot of people um, think the best way to do that is to desaturate a picture in Photoshop or some other tool and make it black and white, but that's really not a good way of doing it. There's, of course, a better way within Photoshop to uh, use some filters and uh, apply different tonal values uh, to create some better looking black and white pictures. But the standalone or filter tool uh, by Nick Collections called Silver Effects Pro is great at creating some stunning black and white images. So I'm going to take a picture I took of my cousin's son and uh, manipulate it um, within this tool. So make sure Photoshop is loaded. I'm going to take this picture and load it. There it is. And I'm going to click on the Silver Effects, Silver Effects Pro button right here to load it into the tool. So there it is, it's just pretty much desaturated. On the left hand side, as always, you have some presets. You may or may not like what the presets do. Go back to the neutral one, and I'll use the tools or the, the settings on the right to really play around with this image. Okay, you can adjust the brightness or the contrast. I like to have a little more contrast. Not too much, a little, just a little bit more, okay? And uh, I like to play it a little bit with the structure. If I take it to the left, it becomes very dreamlike. If I go to the right, it's almost very stark. And I don't necessarily like that for the entire picture, but I'd like to uh, maybe pop up some pop out some other areas within the picture that I want to have more structure, like the hair, as an example. So I can go back to my control points dump one right over here and add more structure to the hair without really affecting much of the picture. Of course I can make it more global but I want to keep it more right here. Add more contrast as well. And a little more structure. Fine structure. And I think that looks good. Okay, I have some other cool settings here. This right here, the toning, is pretty nice. I can uh, use some of the presets. As you uh, hover over it, it'll change the tone of the picture. Like maybe a little bit more of a gold look to it, like this. You can even change the selective colorization within... Um, this area right here, but I like to keep it at the main look that I had before. Okay. You can even burn some of the edges like this. Create an image border for cool effects. Make it look more like a vintage picture. Take down that silver toning a little bit. A little more structure to the hair area right here. And click OK. And now we got a stunning looking picture. So that's it. It's a great tool. It's not too expensive. And if you're into photography and then uh, doing some post work, it's one of those uh, tools I, I can't live without. Okay, till next time, have a great day.